and welcome to the Everett Silver Show. We have exciting guests as we do every week. And so I want to thank you so much for tuning in. And I'm always bringing it to you. So thanks so much for staying in tune with us. Stay connected. You're watching the Everett Silver Show. All right, what's our next move on her? I have no idea. This woman lies without any remorse, and then she pivots without thought to consequence or even reality. Imagine the good she could have done if she'd had the decency to become an honest con woman. All right, we wipe out her database. That's where the value's at, right? If we do that, she'll just restore from a backup. I guess I could install a virus that corrupts it, corrupts the backups, too. Fine. Yeah, my, my first grift... I went to pastry school in Paris to get a job in an arms dealer's favorite restaurant. You know, catch his eye over time. And I spent six months just carving my way into his life like a scalpel. But I walked away from that con with a Van Gogh <laughs> and a briefcase full of diamonds. I mean, they were physical objects. I mean, they were treasures. She... <sighs> She finds thousands of victims in their own homes. And, and, and she sells their, their, their thoughts to a man who pays her in money that doesn't even exist. I mean, is this what crime has come to? Hi, Everett. Hi, Everett. Beth and Noah, thank you so much for doing the show today. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Oh, pleasure to have you guys. Well, folks, Leverage, Redemption, I'm telling you, uh, I got two of the stars. Beth uh, Re uh, is with us, Reese Graff, and also Noah Wiley is here with us. And we got to talk about the rich and powerful and what this team got to say about that. So, Beth, I'll start with you. What, what, talk about this exciting show. Oh, uh, yes. Sorry, I didn't hear the question. I said, let's talk about this exciting show because I'm telling you, everybody's glued in. I tell you, the rich and powerful is trying to do what they want. Tell us how the leverage teams got what they got to say about it. Heck yeah, we got a lot to say and we got a lot of butts to kick. Okay, so um, <laughs> look, the bad guys have gotten even worse. You know, there's a lot more trouble out there. Um, they've gotten these these villains have gotten a lot smarter. Um, they're using the law to get what they want. And so we've had to up our game and get even stronger and tougher and find ways around all of that. You know, I think fans of the old show Leverage will love Leverage Redemption because it's got all the things that you still love, the characters, those relationships and um, all the action and comedy is still going to be there. But this time around, we've got two new shining characters noah wiley plays harry wilson and obviously um you know hardison's got a, a little foster sister who shows up elise shannon um plays brianna and that uh brings a whole new element and surprise and and uh fun to play off of for everybody as well well uh, um i tell you no i heard uh beth talk about your role uh you playing harry and man this is a lot different than the er uh, doctor <laughs> <laughs> very different show very different character. Uh, yeah, he's sort of, uh, he's a bad guy that didn't know he was a bad guy. And then when he realized what a bad guy he was, he didn't know what to do about it. So he's looking to, he's trying to get the redemption. He's trying to get his soul back. And he teams up with this group of people who uh, show him that the road to redemption is in taking all of those old clients that he used to represent. And uh, one by one, we're going to take them all down. It's sort of an A-team, Ocean's Eleven, Robin Hood kind of a story. Now, now, Beth, with that being said, uh, how, how is this role any different from what you've done with uh, 68 Whiskey? You know, I remember that that show. I mean, just talk about this role. I mean, because, guys, you got we're intent and we're glued to the set. So how is this any different than that other role? Yeah, it's very different. I mean, in some ways, both uh, women are very compelling to me to play just because they're so um, good at what they do. And I love it when people have such uh, certainty and know that they're working towards uh, the greater good. So I would say in, in some ways, that's how the, those two connect those shows because the platforms and uh, the worlds are so different. But I think, uh, you know, Parker is going about things, maybe not in the most uh, legal and ethical way sometimes, but uh, the intention is good. And she, her heart's in the right place with this team and they're a chosen family. You know, they, they do what they love 
to help people um, and the, they're willing to risk it all to get justice for the people who've been squashed. So, um, so yeah, it's been, it's been a fun ride playing uh, two characters that care so much about doing the right thing. Now, uh, Noah, uh, I understand both of you guys. I know you as an actor, writer, producer, and director. Both of you guys, I think, have had an opportunity to kind of direct some episodes this year. How, what was that like for you? It was great. Uh, you know, directing has become a kind of an important part of my life. I really enjoy it. It's um, getting to paint with every brush and get to work with everybody on the crew and get to see how talented they all are and tell story with camera, with music, with editing, with every tool in the arsenal. So um, it's it's something that every time I finish, I realize how much more I need to learn. And uh, I keep wanting to get better at it and keep wanting to learn more and more and more. I'm sure Beth feels the same way. It's one of the most humbling things that I've ever done. And, and I love leaning into what scares me. And it always scares me. Is that, is that same feeling with you, Beth, as well, by being able to, to direct some of the episodes and then watch this come to fruition? Absolutely. I started out as a photographer, so I've always had a fascination with, um, you know, being behind the camera and, and love storytelling and all aspects. But being able to watch these characters uh, and, and develop certain moments with them from a director's position, you know, most of the time you step out of the way and just let the, the actors do what they do because they know their character, they know what's happening. But um, you know, obviously we have a shorthand on this show because we, we go way back and Noah came in with his wealth of experience and um, took the time and care to really get to know all of us as well. So we have the benefit of creating with people who really do want to play and collaborate. And I think as a storyteller and a director, it makes that job all the, you know, that much easier. Um, all the prep, all the decisions, all the sleepless nights you have planning your day, uh, you get to set and you know, sometimes you have to throw it all away and just play if, if the circumstances change and you hope that you're as lucky as we are to have a group of people who are willing to pivot with you and, and go along the ride. And, and so it's been a real joy. Well, I got to tell you from what, you know, from, from being a fan, as well as looking at what you guys are doing, we're glued to the set because you guys bring your characters to the stage. And so, I mean, right there on the screen, well, guys, you got to make sure leverage redemption airing on IMDb. Uh, TV, Amazon, you know, that's the, you know, the, the premium free streaming service there. Actually, I think it's, it's, it was on October uh, the 8th, this Friday, right? That's Correct. right. Yeah. And so, guys, thanks so much. Any last minute things you want to say? And I give you both an opportunity. I'll start with you, Beth, and uh, end with Noah. And uh, any last minute things you want to say to help promote the show? Yeah, I would just say come come join us. These The back eight episodes are so much fun. You're going to love uh, watching all of us kick some butt and, um, and, and get some laughs along the way. I would say if you're looking for something that you can watch with both your parents and your kids that will entertain you and make you forget about your hard day, this is the show for you. Well, there you go, guys. Leverage Redemption. Make sure you tune in this Friday night, eight, 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 uh, uh, October the 8th. Beth uh, Reesgroth and also Noah Wiley. Thanks, guys, so much for doing the show. It was a pleasure to have you. Thank you so Thank much. You it's so a, much. Pleasure. a pleasure. You're so welcome. Bye-bye. Well, guys, uh, thanks so much for tuning into the Everett Silver Show. Stay tuned. Don't turn that dial because we got more exciting guests right here on the Everett Silver Show. Be back in a moment. When I think about my dad growing up, I certainly think about that seriousness. But very few people get to see. <laughs> He's funny, weird, and really playful. God help us. In 1981, HIV AIDS was evolving rapidly and frighteningly. There was anger at the government's response. When you got sick, you were gone fast. It's affecting you now. Yeah. Why? Post-traumatic stress syndrome. When COVID hit, he became this target. My dad said, we're going to get through this whole thing. And he's held back. You don't do it because you want to make money. You don't do it for the glory. You do it because you care. When you're involved in a race to stop a horrible disease, you always feel you're not doing things quickly enough. morning john janet thank you so much for doing the show a pleasure to have you 
Well, folks, uh, what a pleasure to have uh, Emmy-winning uh, directors John Hoffman, also Janet Tobias here with us. And why it's so important to talk about this story about Dr. Anthony Fauci. And as a matter of fact, that's the name of uh, uh, the uh, documentary that we have coming up, Fauci. And we got to get into the hearts and minds of the, of the directors. And with that being said, I, I guess I'll start with you, uh, John. Talk about this, uh, I guess, the signature blend between, behind us trying to find out uh, about Fauci, uh, because he's become, I guess, America's most, you know, iconic kind of like uh, man to go to, right? <laughs> I, I, and for good reason, because he's a remarkable science uh, scientist and a remarkable public servant. And, you know, with the emergence of this pandemic, this COVID pandemic, the nation came to understand about Dr. Fauci. But he has been um, our nation's leading uh, sort of expert uh, and scientist fighting pandemics for 50 years. Um, and you know, we made a film about a man whose character was forged in the HIV epidemic. And we've all seen that in many ways it's been tested um, by, by COVID. Um, but that, that a remarkable life that he's led, uh, we felt was very important uh, for the public to understand now that they've come to know who he is. Now, Jenna, you know, we're gonna be glued into this because you're talking about uh... Uh, Fauci's integrity, as uh, John was talking about. Oh, but you can't hear outbreaks talking about from HIV, uh, SARS, Ebola. You know, talk about the unprecedented uh, work that Dr. Fauci, it, it, you guys are trying to, you know, kind of bring out in this documentary. Um, I think Dr. Fauci has served seven presidents, and we should all pause a moment and think what it means to serve seven different presidents. Um, wow. He's testified. Yeah, and that he's testified in front of Congress more than any other living human being. And he is one of the longest serving public um, servants in America. Um, and I think that was something that John and I were really interested in is what it means to be a public servant in 21st century America. Um, what's the role of public servants? Why are they important? And who are the people that decade after decade serve all of us? And uh, John, how much um, should we, we, I guess, America really has come to trust Dr. Fauci, and you guys have directed different, uh, you know, things before. Why is this one so different and important to you? Um, all films are hard to make. Um, this one was no different. Um, and Janet and I have had, both had the privilege of um, making films about some of the most complex um, health issues that this nation and the world has faced. Um, and we saw in um, Dr. Fauci an opportunity not only to make a, a portrait of a great scientist, a great humanitarian, um, a, a great public servant, but we saw the opportunity for the audience to learn about you know, how science works in this country and about the, the NIH, this remarkable institution. It's the largest funder of basic science in the world. Um, and this nation created it. It created it coming out of World War II as a way of you know, building an infrastructure, a global infrastructure that would serve all of humanity. And Dr. Fauci began his career and he had there and he has stayed there. Um, and uh, we think that, that a story like that, a story of that kind of public service, a story about what this nation is capable of, um, you know, not only for our, our own citizens, but the citizens of the world, um, uh, we felt that this was a great opportunity to tell a very inspiring story, a complex story, a complex story about a man who has flaws, a man who has made mistakes, but ultimately about a man in an institution that is there to serve all of us. And then, Janet, lastly, um, I, I looked at the, the documentary is going to cover uh, family and friends and former patients, going to provide their personal commentary about the man, the pers his personality and all, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, in fact, one of um, our great joys has been that a few people who know Dr. Fauci pretty well, um, who work with him all the time, didn't have that window into his family life. His daughter, Jenny, and his wife, Dr. Christine Grady, um, both um, appear and are interviewed in the film. And I think at the heart of who Tony is, is his family. Um, it's a family that raised him in Brooklyn, um, and it is the family that he now has, and that is what gives him the strength to do what he does. 
Well, guys, I got to uh, uh, thank you so much for doing the show because, folks, uh, you got to see how the world-renowned infectious disease specialist became America's doctor in this National Geographic documentary film. Coming to Disney Plus today, actually, uh, Fauci, you want to make sure uh, you connect and tune in. What a wonderful privilege to talk to Emmy winning. Again, directors John Hoffman and also Janet Tobias. Uh, thank you guys for, for doing the show today, and thank you for covering uh, uh, and doing this type of documentary. Thank you, Everett. Thank you. More guests coming your way. Don't touch that dial. Be back in a moment. Jill, thank you so much for doing the show. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, you're so welcome. Well, folks, uh, I have an opportunity to speak with uh, Emmy Award winning Jill Twist is here, comedy writer behind HBO's Last Week Tonight with uh, John Oliver, also a uh, New York Times bestselling author. Uh, so Twist has a new uh, book, Major Makes History, and so we've got to uh, uh, get into her heart and mind as far as uh, this awesome new book, First shelter dog in the White House. And so, again, Jill, welcome to the show. Let's talk about this. Uh, what's the inspiration behind the book that you got out? Sure. Um, I am a huge fan. I'm a huge fan of animals generally, but I am also a huge fan of presidential pets. I've been watching them since I was a kid. I read all their books. I remember when Millie, who is George H.W. Bush's dog, had her own book, and I read that when I was a kid. Um, so when I was given the chance to write a book about Major, um, who is the very first shelter dog to make it to the White House, I jumped at it. I was super excited um, because I also wanted to talk about shelter animals and how there's so many of them out there that are looking for homes and how they make such good friends. You know, when I think in terms about the book, uh, when you talk about President <clears throat> or the friendship, talk about, I guess, the friendship between major in the president because I, my understanding is that uh, president rescued major right yeah this is a story where um, major was actually dropped off or abandoned or however you want to say it as a puppy um, at an animal shelter in delaware uh, and with his brothers and sisters and one day joe biden just walked into the shelter apparently he went there himself um, and he met Major and I guess decided that was the dog for him. And I think Major decided that was the that was the politician for him. And uh, Joe Biden took him home for a while to foster before the official adoption happened. And then they went back and he adopted Major. And then a couple of years after that, um, Joe Biden was elected president. <laughs> and so Major <laughs> asked <laughs> Well, I tell you what, that, that, that's amazing. Now, what we don't, I mean, I don't want to give too much of the book away because we'll make sure that they, they pick it up because I know you can get major makes history anywhere books are being sold, guys. And so, but, but talk about there's an interesting twist, though, because major becomes kind of, kind of uh, returns the favor, right? <laughs> I mean, I think if you talk to anyone who has a rescue dog, which I've been doing a whole bunch this week, all they talk about is not how they saved that dog, but how that dog saved them. Um, right. There's just so much love coming from those dogs um, and cats. Although cats, I think, are a little more judgy, let's be honest. <laughs> but those dogs what? from shelters <laughs> are just become the best friends of their owners. And so when I wrote this, I didn't want to talk so much about how the president rescued Major, but I wanted to talk a lot about how Major rescued a whole family. And then, you know, I just love uh, looking at it, uh, the, the pictures, the, the graphics. I mean, uh, the artwork behind this very book. Any last things that you want to say, Jill, to talk about this amazing, heartwarming book? Well, since you brought it up, I would love to give credit to my illustrator. Her name is Mary Bell Lechuga. And as fun as it is to go write a story by myself in a room, the best part of my life is sending it off and then having it come back even more beautiful and funnier and everything than I expected because the illustrator did such a fantastic job. So I want to shout her out since she's not here today. 
got to tell you, because pitchers do speak a thousand words or more. But I tell you, what a, again, guys, major makes history is available wherever books are. So what a wonderful privilege talking to Emmy Award winning Jill Twist. Uh, thank you so much, Jill, for doing the show. I'm excited and thank glad to have you. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Bye-bye. More guests coming your way. Don't touch that dial. I'll be back in a moment. Hi, Everett. Hi, Everett. Kelly, Lexi, you know, it's, uh, Kelly, it's good to have you back again this year. You too. I was wondering, can I call you yeah. Pastor? Well, you don't have to. No, just call me Everett. It's all right. You got to do it. <laughs> but you know what? I got to tell you, it's always, <laughs> it's exciting always to have you guys. Well, listen, my special guest is with us, the Dallas Cowboy Cheerleaders making the team. We got to find out what you know, uh, what's going on. I have the squad director, Kelly Finglass, is here, and I believe Lexi Smith is with us, and I believe she's a cheerleader as well. Guys, welcome to the show, and Lexi, I got to, I mean, uh, Kelly, I got to start with you. I saw some of this rigorous stuff that's going on. I mean, you know, I got a chance to see some stuff before anybody else. What is it going to take to make this team? This year, it takes a lot of talent. We've got extremely talented dancers this year. They came from 45 states. You know, performers were out of work in a lot of places, and um, Dallas is one place where we kept dancing. So great technique and talent, and um, it requires a lot of stamina, a lot of showmanship, a lot of strength, mental strength and physical strength, and then the great preparation in terms of dance skills. Now, now, uh, Kelly, I, I saw, though, this time, you really got, you, you guys had more people to come out. You had more hopefuls. And uh, w- with that being said, I know there was a couple of talent just really just stood out. But Lexi, I know, is with us as well. Now, Lexi is a cheerleader. Talk about the hopefuls, though, that beginning their training to compete in one of the highest, you know, type things for one of the greatest teams of America. Talk about that from your perspective. Sorry, did you say me? Yeah, Lexi. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so I have always been really impressed by the amount of women that come from all over the country. And sometimes we even have girls from out of the country. Um, I think I'm one of the few that is actually from Dallas, which is, is kind of crazy. But um, I think the show has really given us great visibility. I know I watched it growing up. Um, and I think that that's what really brings in a lot of the talent. And we're super grateful for that because it keeps us reaching to the next level. Now, uh, with that being said, uh, Kelly, talk about, though, you know, the additions, the contestants, you know, the coming from all over, as uh, Lexi just said. What are you looking for when you see someone come before you? Well, you know, first off, we have two two ladies from your area. We have two ladies on the squad, Kat and Marissa, both from North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's always thrilling to us. That's what the TV show has done for our organization. It has elevated the visibility, which has attracted more dancers. And um, I love people from across the country, diversity, just unique experiences. And the common denominator they all have is is great talent um, that's been trained all over the country. Just the different styles is even fun to see. Um, we have amazing women this year. We had them try out from 43 states, and yeah. uh, most of them have their bachelor's degrees. Some of them have their master's degrees. They have great careers as school teachers. We have a nurse. We have uh, real estate, um, uh, CPA. So they're just impressive women outside of performance. Now, I'm telling you, I, I saw um... – you know, when, when you think in terms of, uh, and Kel- Kelly, you bring such an international record, you're a recognized leader and trendsetter all over the NFL. Uh, and so the with that being said, Lexi, you when you go there and you, you begin to seek something you've been seeking for, what do you pull from someone the likes of like Kelly and uh, are you learning as well? I remember that first time as a rookie when Kelly walked out and like I said, I had watched the show forever. So I felt like I was meeting a celebrity. And um, since then, our relationship has just continued to grow and I'm thankful to know her on a personal level. And 
uh, one thing I admire is she always is helping us reach for the next level and she has high expectations and, and that comes with a long history of, of our organization and uh, just continuing to reach new success. And so I'm grateful uh, to have her as a leader and a director and a mentor and um, that she's always pushing us to be better every day. And then Kelly, lastly, with that being said, uh, you've been representing Dallas County. I mean, you're talking about since 1984, and it gets seemed like to me. It, it, do you find it getting better and better? And really, I got to tell you, I have a 16 year old who's been cheering since middle school. You know, of course, she's looking and learning. Uh, any anything that surprised you now? The drive behind these cheerleaders. Surprised in their drive. Um... I wouldn't, no, I wouldn't say I'm surprised because I am surrounded by high achieving women and it does start at that young age. And that's such a, such a blessed time for you as a parent with her. And, um, you know, I'm a huge believer in the educators that are around our children, you know, so right. for you and for me, you always hope and pray that your kids have one coach, one teacher, one somebody that inspires them because I have absolutely seen people that had, somebody believed in them and they succeeded. And I've also last year on our show, Armani makes our team and she tells me on camera that she'd had a dance instructor tell her she'd never make it. And I was like, wow. you've got to be kidding me. You're she, so wow. I love helping people find what they really are capable of because those voices in their head can make them succeed and be confident or those voices in their head can make them be defeated. And I hope to be one that helps people succeed. Well, thank you so much for what you're doing. I appreciate both of you doing the show. Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders making the team guys, make sure again, uh, you tune in. It returns Friday, seven, uh, September the 17th, 9 PM on GMT and what a wonderful privilege to have the internationally recognized leader and trendsetter, uh, again, Kelly Finglass and also cheerleader Lexi Smith. Guys, thanks for doing the show. appreciate doing it. Thank you, Thank you. and it's a privilege for us as well. Thank you. You're so welcome. Bye-bye. Every 